Johnson Angler today I'm going to show you how I make my line through traces for my soft plastic lures in this case I've got a 30 centimeter savage gear loose bodied real eel in an albino color um, yeah you can buy them savage gear but they're very difficult to source um, so I make my own so if I run through some of the components that I use here you can use your own substitute what you like this is just what I have found works for me so if we start off with, we're going to need some wire and I've got some American fishing wire here in 60 pound test. Um, some of it's in red, some of it's your usual sort of brown color. It's got a coating on it and I find it very good for this. It doesn't wear easily. It doesn't kink easily. Uh, for me, it's the thing I find best. You can use titanium, use what you like. It's up to you. Um, you're going to need a shallow screw. Now you can buy these from Savage Gear as well, but other sources. Um, one that, that's going to suit the bait that you're using. If you think it's a bit too big, you can always cut it off with your uh, cutters. Um, but yeah, you're going to need one of those. You're going to need some split rings. Now here I've got the Savage Gear um, split rings in £59. They're 5.5 millimetres. That's strong enough. It's about the right size for what I want to do. I've also got some of their last metre stinger spikes here. We're going to need a couple of those at least. And you're going to need... Um, some wire trace crimps with a ball that suits the uh, wire that you're working with. Well, this is uh, for wire up to £80. You're going to need whatever size hooks you, you, you want. These are 3 O's, I believe, uh, a bead and a swivel as well. So we're going to be putting two baits into this. You can do exactly the same, but using a single bait, and I will do a separate video on that. You're also going to need some split ring pliers. These are the Texas um, tackle split ring pliers find them very good you're going to want some crimping pliers these are made by fox and you're going to want some wire cutters of whatever type you've got so that's what you're going to need uh, i think we better show you how i do it now first thing we're going to need to do is cut off a piece of your chosen wire and you want about 24 inches you want to you want to end up with something around 18 inches uh that's uh appropriate to all the bylaws in this country and in the UK here. Gives you a bit of something to work with. Um, and then you want a couple of crimps. Well, we're gonna use one crimp to start off with. So you just pass your crimp, your wire, through your crimp. You're gonna be looking to make a loop here. And then you're gonna pass it back through. Tease the loop, you don't want a big loop in the end. And if your crimp's big enough, you're going to pass it back through the third time. It can be a bit fiddly, but I found these work lovely. This is where you've got to be neat and tidy. You want to pull this, you want a nice small loop, and you want to pull this back through so you haven't got too big a loop on this side, if you see what I mean. So we've got to the point where we want to crimp now. So get your crimping pliers. Make sure you sit the crimp evenly in the crimping pliers. You don't want to be pinching onto the wire at all. You want to make sure you are just crimping the crimp and nothing else. And then it's a good firm grip. Not too hard, not too soft, just enough to make the crimp um, form the shape that you want. There we go, crimp down nice and hard, but firm. There you go, a nicely formed crimp. Next step is to cut this tag end off. So that's where you need your wire cutters. Uh, see, I'm trying to do this in front of the camera uh, whilst holding everything in place. Tight as you can get it, nice steady crimp. Watch where that flies off to. I know where that's gone, so I'm fine here, but watch your eyes, things like that. If you're worried, wear some glasses. Now you've got a nice strong connection there and you've got your loop you need to start off with. <clears throat> you uh, could clip that to your trace. Uh, very often I'm fishing with a trace above that for my other uh, lures and I just clip this onto the, uh, the link swivel. Uh, up to you what connection you want to use to your line. So the next step we need to do is thread on our shallow screw. Easy to do that. So just pop it on there so it's running up and down loosely. Um, don't worry that it can come up over if it really wants to, it doesn't matter. Next thing we need, we need a bead. Big enough so that the uh, 
the shallow screw there can't go through. Let's try and get this in, focus it in the O, if we can find it. There we go. Right, so there we are so far. We have our crimped loop, our shallow screw and our bead. Well, the next thing we need to do is put, it's one I prepared earlier, it's a split ring with a swivel on. This is an 80 pound swivel. See if it'll focus, there you go. So I've already put the swivel onto that. You don't need to do that, you can do it afterwards. I just find it easier to do it this way. Now I want to thread the wire through the swivel and then I want to crimp it to the swivel. So in order to do that, I need to first get my crimp. So bear with me, I'm doing this through, through the camera. I want to get them past my swivel on. And I want to do the same as what I've just done at the other end, to be honest. So pull the crimp down, pass your wire through the crimp. And if you're using the right crimps and the right wire, you'll have no problems. Pull this down, tease it around. I don't want to waste the wire. And push it back through a third time. I use three times. I find that the most secure method and I never have breakages. So I'm just doing the same as I did before, pulling it through so that, that little loop there is nice and small. Swivel's running freely on that there now and I've got my spare tag end and a nice size loop. I probably would have liked that loop a bit smaller but it will do, I can fiddle with it, I can make it smaller. And if we run, do, there we go, that'll do nicely. Pull that tight. All right. Here we go, crimp again, placing your crimp in, the crimping pliers, making sure you're not crimping over the ends of the crimp. You're just crimping the crimp, not the wire. One good hard and firm crimp. And then that will form your crimp for you. Um, and you'll see it, it's shaped around the wire here a bit. You know, it's not perfectly flat, but that isn't going anywhere, I can assure you of that. And uh, all we need to do now is trim that off again. So let's go and do that. And we will have then made the top top pit of our trace. So this is what we have so far. So we've got our crimped loop at the top. We've got our free running shallow screw. We have a bead and we have a swivel crimped on to the wire with a split ring attached to the swivel. That's the first part of the trace. In order to attach this trace to the lure, we need one of our uh, spikes, stinger spikes as they're called. Um, you can attach them on the day if you want, and all you do is you're just gonna clip them into that loop that you created. And there you go, you got your stinger spike. I believe that's in focus. But what we're, we're aiming to do now is to this ring here, we're going to clip, um, well not clip, we're going to crimp a length of trace wire, the length we desire, so that hooks are placed where we want in the belly of the bait. So in so order to see where those hooks are going to sit, we need to start to sort of use the uh, the soft plastic and uh, screw the shallow screw, screw into the soft plastic. Now you can do this a lot easier by pulling the it out over the wire trace. And then it's just a case of screwing it in, hanging the lure down once you've got it started and making sure you screw it in to the middle of the bait the best you can. It will ruin the ends a bit, it's just how it is. And you want it so that it's pretty much in the middle and level, if you can see that, because so that the line can pass down through the top of the ring. So all you need to do then is push your wire trace back on and you'll see how this sits now. Uh, and you want to be thinking, where am I going to put the hooks? Well, I like to have a hook around about here. So just ahead of the, uh, this, this fake fin. So you push your stinger in there and you can see how they work now. And there are, that's allowing the this bit to, to move still, as the stinger is on that loop. 
So now I want to hook around about here. So here's the fiddly bit. Um, it, it, it's pretty much guesswork. You, it's just guesswork and practice. And uh, you're going to need to crimp to this split ring, a short length of wire. I want the hook around about there. If you see, there's a hole there on these Savage Gear Eels. Um, so it's a very short length of wire, and I want another crimp the other side of that, like I have another split ring, sorry, the other side of this wire. So I'm going to have a split ring, wire, split ring. So let's go ahead and get a little length of wire again. <clears throat> Use the same wire. So if you can, you can sort of guess them at it. But what I'm going to do is crimp that first one on, and then I'm going to cut. So if we're crimping onto here, all we're going to do is get another couple of crimps or lots of crimps pass your, first pass your crimp on get your split ring pass the wire through the split ring you're making your loop again same as we've already done pass the wire through again tighten down a bit don't want to waste lots of wire you want to get this reasonably tight there we go a nice little loop there forming pass back through for the third time just adds extra strength into it and less chance of uh, anything slipping by doing this the third time yes it's fiddly if you've got the right size crimps as i do here it's not as fiddly um there we go i'm getting there now it doesn't have to be pretty, it's entirely up to you. Just pull it back through as far as I can with my hands. You could use pliers, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and crimp that now. So same procedure as before. Making sure I've just got the crimp and nothing else. There, filling around, nice and firm. There we go, beautifully done. Snip the end. All right, then we're going to try and think about measuring it. So pull that out of the way. I want my hook around about here onto a split ring. So we've got to get the split ring on there first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow something like that amount for me to play with and then tighten down. Better to give yourself a bit more than too little. Chop off the length you think you're going to need to work with. Let's get this wire out of the way. Get yourself another split ring. Uh, these come in, um, as you'll see, they come in shiny and uh, matte finish. I do prefer the matte finish, but I don't think it makes much difference, to be honest. Maybe it's a piker being really finicky. So, same process again. We're going to need to first put a crimp on. Pass it through whatever you're trying to crimp to it. Okay, it wants, of course it wants to go back down, doesn't it? Pull down, get that out of the way. Pass the wire through. Uh, this is where I'm going to adjust. So I want it round about there. So you need to pull, fiddle around with your, your ends of your wire. Shorten it, lengthen it how you want and a small bit of wire isn't it so you can see i'm laying that on the belly of the lure and i'm just gauging where it's going to come uh you've got a split ring to add in there i would say something like that i'm quite happy with that um actually no i'm not i want the spike to be on that ring if you see what i mean on this loop here so Let's have a look, straighten it out again. It's just trial and error. So that's straightened a little bit too long, I think. I want a nice small loop. Well, there we go. I'm quite happy with that now. It doesn't have to be precise. Let's make sure that doesn't tread through. There, you can see it's fiddly. This is obviously, I'm not making the best job of this because I'm trying to film it. At the same time, 
and it's a fiddly job anyway but you can see if i can manage doing it like this you'll manage <clears throat> when you're not having a film so i've got everything in place before i crimp i need to double check and as you can see it's uh oh there we go it's not bad it's about where i want so we'll set like that you can fiddle around to your heart's content at home there make sure i'm not crimping the wire just the crimp good solid hard crush there we go crimped chop off our tag end as ever hold on tight to it it won't go anywhere there we are put that aside so where are we now yeah a lot of back breaking work for me <laughs> so that's what we've got so far so we've got a line through system we've got a bead we've got a swivel we've got our a pin we've got our split ring we've got another split ring crimped on here so what we need to do now is get our <clears throat> spike stinger spike another stinger spike and put that on to the loop we created by crimping on that uh, split ring there we go and as you can see now I stab that in there there we go what we got now is somewhere to mount our hooks I'm going to put a hook on that split ring and I'm going to put a hook on this split ring I'm going to fiddle around with that so that sits nicer push it back in again and all we got to do now is get our split ring pliers and a couple of our chosen hooks like I say these are 3-0 eagle claw hooks I've squashed the barbs I don't use barb hooks i use barbless hooks i don't find i lose a lot of pike i lose the odd pike whether i'd have lost them anyway i don't know but this is certainly kinder to the fish we're sticking treble hooks in them after all you know we want to be able to remove those hooks easily i find barbless hooks don't make such big o's either but it, it's a personal preference you do what you feel happy with so all i got to do now is open up a split ring There we go with my split ring pliers my texas taco split ring pliers these are great you can buy them in various sizes it opens up the split ring and then push the hook into the opened up split ring turn the split ring around and i've got my hook on that one i'll do the same with this one i'll turn it until you find the opening Open it up with your split ring pliers. I'll show you the split ring pliers in a bit more detail in a minute. I get mine from uh, a chap called Chico's Lures online. Sells pike gear, shirt bait, traces, hooks. I buy the hooks from him as well. Um, great products. So there we have our completed rig. Um, what are the benefits of the rig? Well, the biggest benefit of the rig is this can all detach when the fish strikes which separates the lure from the trace. As it says, it's a line through. So this, what happens is this shoots up the line out of the way and you're left with the pike hooked here to your terminal tackle. That makes it easier to see what you're doing when you're unhooking because you haven't got a, this in the mouth as well. Um, it uh, stops the, uh, the pike using the lure as leverage to maybe get a hook out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard maybe with a hard bait i don't know about a soft bait um a couple of important things to remember is the distance between your hooks really you don't want them touching i could have spaced that a bit better to be honest it's a little bit short um but as i say i was doing this in front of the camera and if i was doing it out not in front of the camera i'd do a better job but you can see the mechanism the idea behind the thing uh you've got your swivel on here so if a pike spins you know that should help you with that. Hopefully you won't lose the fish. Your stingers enable you to put, position it where you want on the lure, on the belly of the lure. Maybe even on the top of the lure if you thread it through the other way. You could do that and fish it like that if it's really snaggy. Um, they also save your baits a bit rather than sticking hook points in. Um, of course, you've got three, tre three points of the trebles exposed instead of two because you'd have to otherwise use uh, one point of the treble stuck in the bait. That's where your baits get ripped with that. Um, because they're loose hanging, 
you can get away with um, using slightly smaller hooks than you might have to if you were burying them in the baits. Uh, talking about that, if I show you another bait, you can do this with single uh, hook. You just use the front part of the trace and one of the back part, put the swivel up the front here. And uh, yeah, you'd need a bigger hook for that that bait. What you you want, what you'll find is that if you were say to, uh, just get a treble hook here, to bury this hook into that bait like that, um, obviously you're losing a treble that could hook a fish, but it masks the hook a bit more. Now when you are doing this, if you are, do do that, you really want, when you're looking down from above, to be able to see the hook points. Um, that way, if a fish grabs it, it's gonna feel the hook point and the plastic itself isn't masking the hook point. If you're doing it, like I say, with a line true and you're, it's free swinging here, you can use a smaller hook because it can move around and grab easier in the mouth of the pike. Um, and smaller hooks are sharper. There's another advantage. They'll bury in, give you better hook holds. Um, yeah, so obviously they're cheaper too, smaller hooks. I wouldn't go down too much in size. I mean, that's about the right size for this bait. Sometimes um, treble hooks rigged in that manner like that can spoil the action of a bait because these hooks are loose, loosely hanging. They don't tend to spoil the action of a soft bait as much. It doesn't put any rigidity into the bait. Um, so yeah, there's another advantage of using uh, stinger spikes. There are probably others, but that's what I can think of here today. As I say, it's, it's relatively cheap to make your own. They last a good length of time and they're a great little idea. You know, Savage Gear came up with a line through principle. Uh, so you can buy their line through lures and when their traces eventually do wear, they don't last that long, I'm afraid. Um, you can make one up yourself. You can use other attachments, wire attachments other than these stingers. You can buy their own um, uh, special line through attachments if you want, but that's all extra cost. These stinger spikes, you can make these yourself. You just buy some wire and bend them to shape. They don't have to be exactly like that. They don't even really need that hook a lot, I don't think. And um, whatever sizes you want, you can do this for smaller lures. If you see in the packet here, there's some smaller pins in there as well. This is a mix of small and medium in the last meter Savage Gear Stinger Spikes kit. So you could do a lot smaller soft plastics, maybe for you bass anglers in the States. All good in my book. I hope that helped you out. Cheers. <laughs>